Hey, what's it gonna be, funny guy? It's gonna be that Groovy Scoopcast, your go-to audio hub for all things Scooby-Doo. Hey guys, I'm Shannon. And I'm Derek. Thank you for joining us again for another episode of that Groovy Scoopcast. Today we're gonna be taking a trip over to San Francisco... Because that's where I left my neck. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> is that where you left it? I left my neck in San Francisco. Yeah, this is an episode from the Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo show. It was our first episode that we've watched together with Scrappy-Doo. Before we go there and try and find your neck, let's dive into the Mystery Machine match first. Shan, can you describe to our listeners, if this is their first time listening, what the Mystery Machine match is? Of course. You ask me three questions, I ask you three questions, we get points for all of the questions we get right. That's about it. It's basically a Scooby-Doo trivia competition between Shannon and I, and you know, me knowing all things Scooby-Doo, it's not as hard as you would think it would be. And me drastically losing is... Hey, Hey, you're only two points behind me right now. Oh, okay. I have seven points, right? You have five points. You could... You could... Get ahead of me at I, some point. I highly doubt it, but thank you for believing in me. You might get ahead today. I doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's find out. Shannon, as always, you can go first. All right, first question. Who does Scooby Dumb live with? Ma and Pop Kettle or Ma and Pa Skillet? Skillet. All right. You were right. <laughs> I love Scooby Dumb. Of course I would know that. <laughs> All right. What famous monster does Scooby-Doo dress up as at the end of Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost? I don't remember. It's a famous monster. Think like Halloween. Like a werewolf? Kinda. Is that your final answer? A werewolf? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Oh, no. It was Dracula. Oh. Nope. (laughs) (laughs) okay what's your next question dusty is famous for making what spicy food who the fuck is dusty (laughs) i don't have the slightest idea it just says dusty are they talking about like deputy dusty from the yabba dabba do and scrappy do show possibly (sighs) he makes spicy food yeah i don't know is it like chili or something yes How did you get that? I don't know. (laughs) I actually got that. Yes. That that was honestly like just a wild guess. (laughs) I hate you. (laughs) All right. Which member of the gang has an uncle Nathaniel that lives in New England? Is it Shaggy? It is Shaggy. Oh. (laughs) He looks like an old version of Shaggy. I was going to say, I thought I remembered it, but I didn't know. Yeah. All right, what's your final question? A giant kind of what flying creature causes the mystery ma- the mystery machine to crash in Ghastly Ghost Town? In Ghastly Ghost Town. Oh, um, shit, I don't know. I don't, I'm trying to remember, like, what series that's from. I feel like it's the new Scooby-Doo movies. Was it a giant bat? It was a bat. (laughs) It was? Oh, my God. I don't want to be your friend anymore. Okay. (laughs) All right, guys. Podcast is canceled. Shannon is leaving, and I need to find a new host. I'm out. Yep. All right. Give me my last question. (laughs) All right. Yes or no? Boris Kripoff has a demon, or was a demon, that appeared on the show. (laughs) What? That's the question. Yes or no? Boris Kripoff was a demon. Is that a real person? I guess. I don't know. Yes or no, Shannon? I'm going to say yeah. That's some random. Yes. Oh. (laughs) So you got a point. Yay. So I'm still two points behind, but that's okay. That's progress. (laughs) 
<laughs> so you're at seven and I'm at nine? Yes. Yay! I'm winning still. Mm. Mm. <laughs> All right, well, that was this week's Mystery Machine Match. And now it's time for the Scooby Doo Review. This week's episode, we're reviewing I Left My Neck in San Francisco from Scooby Doo and Scrappy Doo. This is the first series that we review so far on this podcast that has Scrappy Doo in it. Your thoughts, Shannon? I don't like him. No? No. No? No. That's it? I don't like Scrappy, man. I never have. Never will. Never will. You see, I I'm I have mixed feelings about him. Like I see a lot of like why the hate is there, but he's in some ways lovable, I guess. My okay. My very first note was talk about how uh, my handwriting is illegible. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I put down talk about how scared Scooby is when he first sees Scrappy. So, like, yeah, Scooby is a scaredy cat, so, like, when this little dog pops out of a box and is like, hey, Uncle Scooby, like, yeah, that'd probably scare me, too. Yeah. But you're there expecting someone. Oh, like in the intro? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, sidebar, had he stayed that scared of him, his life never would have been threatened. You mean, like, in the 2002 live-action movie? Yeah. <laughs> You're, like, going long shot right there. Like, that's, that's not going to happen. That's end, ha- man. That's that, end game. That's not going to happen for, like, another 20 years. <laughs> um, yeah, so this week's episode, you know, takes the gang to San Francisco. Um, the basic premise that we're pulling from Scoobypedia is, The gang head off to Alcatraz Island on a tour. When there, they meet the lady vampire of the bay, who resembles Daphne a lot. Is it her, or one of the other tourists, who are very mysterious? Um, first off, the vampire looks nothing like Daphne. Right. Maybe like Daphne's 80-year-old grandma. (laughs) Well, the thing is, like, they're basically saying, hey, Daphne's a redhead. The vampire's a redhead. They're the same person. But Shaggy literally says that at one point. Yeah. But before we get there, because I want to talk about the fact of, yeah, let's go to Alcatraz. Yeah. Like, what kind of conversation do you have to be or have to just be like, yeah, let's go to Alcatraz? Well, that's like a tourist spot. I guess. I would want to go see Alcatraz. That's cool. (laughs) That's scary to me. It's supposed to be really haunted. Well, that's probably why the gang went there. I want to know, like, how they talk. (laughs) Shaggy and Scooby into going on. They tricked these. them. Yeah. They're like, we're going to go to Cedar Point. Get in the car. Surprise, we're at Alcatraz. Right. I didn't like how the episode started, I guess. I didn't really like how there was no, like, you know how when an episode starts in this kind of series, there's always kind of like a intro music a little bit. Like, not, yeah. not the theme song, but mm-hmm. like, kind of like a setting the mood yeah. music. Like, da 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 well, there was nothing. It was just the narration of the guy that was driving the boat. He's like, this is Alcatraz Island, and da 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 And I'm like, whoa! Oh, okay, so we're starting. I wasn't prepared to start taking notes. <laughs> well, and I even wrote down at one point, but I don't know if it's true, but I put that that was the fastest we've ever seen a villain. Like, it was like... So quick. Okay, I'm glad you said something, because I crossed it off because I wasn't sure, but it was like, yeah, like, they showed up, and they were like, yeah, there's a vampire around here somewhere. Oh, phew, vampire. Yeah. <laughs> like, you turn around, vampire. Done. Well, the thing is, so, when they arrive to the island on the boat, they got the man that's driving the boat. I forgot his name. I don't care. He's not important. There was a younger woman. Forgot her name. Don't care. She's not important. There was an older woman. I also forgot her name. <laughs> but, but when she, but when she appeared on screen, I looked at you and was just like, "She's the villain." I literally. Okay. <laughs> I want you to know. I wrote down, "Old lady is the villain." Like <laughs> the second I saw her, "Old lady's the villain." Yep. Exactly. Um. No question. Yeah. <laughs> I also want to talk about how at one point they were like, oh, yeah, so there's a vampire here, blah, 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 blah. Go ahead and just wander around Alcatraz. Yeah. Have fun. Bye. <laughs> like, I don't know if tourist groups actually do that because I that seems so. dangerous. Yeah. I also want to know, how did they know whose cage is the only word I can think of? Cell. Cell. <laughs> Everyone's cell was because they were like, oh, this was Birdman's cell and I want to see this person's well, cell. Well, I mean, I guess if you're a tour guide and that's your job, like, you should know those things. Maybe. Or lie. But, like, Fred knew. 
or oh yeah that's right fred didn't know because they were like oh that was birdman's cage maybe there's like plaques outside of them but the fact that they wanted to visit like specific cells all the cells look the same yeah and i guess like if there was a plaque i could see like i want to go take a picture outside of this guy's cell but if it was just a regular cell right why does it matter well yeah and then I don't know, the Birdman thing, I kind of left alone. But then I don't remember if it was Fred or if it was the captain who stated, you know, Lefty Callahan's yeah. cell. And, you know, they elaborated a little bit about how he stole the, the jewels or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I was instantly like, okay, this has something to do with him. Like, I this could not be what... any more in your face than the old woman being the villain. <laughs> <laughs> we had no basis for. But I actually want to kind of back up oh, for a wait, moment. Yeah. Okay. I just kind of want to back up for a mm-hmm. moment. Because, you know, Shaggy and Scooby don't want to go in the prison. So they wait outside with Scrappy. And they're just like, we're going to watch the crops grow out here. The weeds. <laughs> the weeds, yes, the weeds. So they get attacked by the vampire outside while the rest are inside and i didn't really notice this until we watched this for the second time that the old lady whoever her name was (laughs) she was inside with the rest of the group and no one mentioned anything about her like being separated from the group so how did this vampire also appear outside and attack shaggy and scooby and scrappy there was a second villain there always is. There's always a second <laughs> villain. Well, I actually have a theory. <clears throat> so I have I have one theory. Okay. Aside from, you know, you saying there's another villain. What if that was actually a real vampire? Because remember, like, later on in the episode when they go back to their hotel and they go into the, the reading room, as Velma calls it, and they find a book about, like, old legends and everything from mm-hmm. San Francisco. And they have a picture of the lady vampire of the bay and it looks exactly like her. So, I mean, that makes sense why the costume looks exactly the same, you know, because the old lady probably researched that. But, like, what if that's just actually the real vampire? Like, in that instance, they actually got attacked by the real vampire. I like that idea better. Yeah. Because, I mean, vampires do exist in Scooby in the Scooby-Doo world. Yeah. Like, Dracula, I remember Dracula from Scooby-Doo and the Reluctant Werewolf mm-hmm. is a real vampire. And there's tons of real vampires that appear throughout the series. So... Maybe they got attacked by a real one. Okay. And kind of (laughs) playing off of that, I want to talk about, first off, why is Scrappy always trying to fight? And I made a note, kind of like in the beginning, about how my assumption, it doesn't have anything to do with anything, but I'm thinking that Scooby is like his family's hero. Why? Because just the way that Scrappy reacts around him, he's always like, oh, my Uncle Scooby is the greatest, and my Uncle Scooby is so cool. Yeah. So, like, obviously his mom was playing up his uncle this whole time. Something like that. And then besides that, he, like, one of the first things he says in this episode is, oh, cool, we're at Alcatraz, and there's a vampire. My Uncle Scooby's gonna beat him up. Yeah. And, like... He's just, he's always thinking so much of him. Yeah. His family has to talk him up so much. Something like that. Like, your Uncle Scooby is fighting crime. That happens all the time. You know, Scrappy's just like, oh, Scooby, look at that nasty monster over there. Go kick its ass. Yeah. Like, that's basically what he does, Mm -hmm. because he expects him to do it. Exactly. Yeah. So there's definitely, like, a play out back home, Mm -hmm. and I feel like one day when he goes home, he's going to be like, no, I actually run away from him. Scrappy doesn't notice any of it. No, never. (laughs) He's oblivious to all of the cowards. Every se- well, and even when they run in the opposite direction and they accidentally fall into the wheelbarrow, and he's like, mm-hmm. "Oh, such a good idea, Uncle Scooby." Yeah, yeah. He, I, I think he's just like, he's delusional. He's just so well, and you got to think about it too. If your whole life you're told like your Uncle Scooby is the coolest person ever, he fights crime, he like solves mysteries, and then you get to go spend the summer with him. Hell yeah. And you're going to spend that whole time being like, my Uncle Scooby is awesome. And then it turns out he isn't. But you're never going to see that. You're not going to see it till you're older and then you try to take his soul. Or here's another theory. (laughs) What if, you know, because they always say you should never meet your heroes. Yeah. Scooby is his hero. And over the course of, I think it was like a decade or two that Scrappy was in the Mm Scooby-Doo series back in the 80s. Like, over time, he began to realize Scooby is not what his family chalked him up to be. 
and that's why he wants revenge in the 2002 Scooby-Doo <laughs> movie. Well, no, it's because he needs an innocent soul. I know what the reasoning was in the movie, but I'm just saying. Maybe that's why he didn't try very hard to find another soul. He was like, oh, my <laughs> Uncle Scooby is kind of a piece of shit, but he's pretty innocent, so. No, I'm, I'm very confident now, and this is my head canon, is that Scrappy realizes that Scooby is just not what he was told all his life. And now his, like, identity is being questioned. His whole life well, has been for naught. Well, <laughs> and that's the whole thing. Never meet your heroes, period. Don't spend a decade with your hero, yep. man. Yep. They are just not your hero anymore. Yeah, and if you are that hero, watch out. Because if you shatter that person's reality, they're coming for you. Oh, yeah. With a 10,000-year <laughs> demon reign. <laughs> but um, back to I left my neck in San Francisco. <laughs> So, when they are on their way back from Alcatraz to the hotel. Yeah. And we realize that the red light is missing in the boat. Yeah. Velma looks over and goes, hmm, I wonder. Yeah. And I literally just went, how would she know already? What are you thinking? I mean, unless she figured out the same way we did of like, oh yeah, he stole some jewels. Yeah. But what would your thought be of like, maybe there was a ruby in there. And maybe it's gone now. Yeah. I'd be like, no, the red light's out. It's fine. He'll yeah. get a ba- he'll get a battery or whatever. You know, because there's been no indication yet that, you know, because they have encountered the vampire. They all know that there is a mystery to solve, but there's no indication that the vampire is at all connected to the crimes that were committed by Lefty Callahan. Mm-hmm. Nothing. So what are you thinking? Nope. Like, I want you yeah. to tell me. Don't say, hmm, like mm, you're smart you and you're thinking? smarter than everyone else in the room. Like... Tell me what you're thinking. This reminds me of like... Because you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, this reminds me of an episode of Family Guy, actually. You know, because there's always those episodes where Brian and Stewie, they go back in time. Yeah. Using the time machine. And it always breaks somehow when they get into the past. So, like, there was one time when it broke and Stewie's trying to fix it. He's like, I, you know, I think I need to figure out this. And then Brian, like, leans in and he's like, hmm. And then Stewie's like, wait, what, what? What are you looking for? What are you looking for specifically? Like, that's what I'm asking you, Velma, right now. It's like, what are you thinking specifically right now? <laughs> what are you, hmm, that's interesting. What's interesting? <laughs> you know, we skipped over a couple of animation errors I wanted to note, but we'll talk about those later because okay. there were a lot of them. <laughs> I wanted to, I put a note on, um, so we get back to the hotel. Mm-hmm. Daphne's like, oh, I still feel sick. I'm going to go upstairs and lay down. Okay, yeah, cool. Entire episode. She got seasick and like travel sick. Like, it's understandable it happened. I call but... bullshit. They've been on boats all the time. Okay. Um, but anyway, so <laughs> they're like, okay, cool. We're going to go read. And so she goes upstairs. After the whole vampire attack, she comes back downstairs. Yeah. And then they specifically ask her, how are you feeling? And she's like, I'm still feeling sick. I got so pissed because if you're feeling sick, stay in bed. Right. Why did you come downstairs? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I heard a ruckus. Stay your ass in bed. <laughs> How did you hear a ruckus? You're like three stories up. And you're trying, you're supposed to be sleeping. <laughs> you're literally supposed to be sleeping and feeling better. If you hear a ruckus, stay in bed. Unless the fire alarm goes off or somebody says there's a tornado, stay in bed. Right. <laughs> well, she comes down after they were actually like looking in that book about the lady vampire of the bay in the reading room. Yeah. And I noted that Shaggy just looked so fucking bored when (laughs) Velma was reading out of this book. Like, he looked like he would want to be anywhere else but here. He just flat out doesn't care. He's like, I don't want to see this vampire again. Let's go home. Right. (laughs) Another note, and I guess that's not really an animation error that I want to say, because like I said, I want to save those for a, f- a little bit later. But I've noticed something that in that was really prevalent in this episode, and also in the last episode that we watched with the creepy heat from the deep. Uh-huh. Their proportions are always off. Like, yes. everyone's proportions are really off. And just in general, the art style of these episodes are so wonky. Like, in general. Like, I remember at the beginning of the episode, Scooby's head was just... It looked huge on his body. And it was freaking me out. And there's many times where Shaggy's arms just don't look right. And Fred's just his own mess. (laughs) Let's be real. (laughs) But then another thing about this episode particularly I was pointing out to you was, like, the weird shots and the angles that they were trying to pull off. They're trying to be, like, really cinematic, I guess. 
like these really dynamic angles looking up and down of but you can't do that until you can make shaggy's arms the same length yeah (laughs) if scooby's head looks too big for his body don't be trying to make it look okay from an aerial view like that's not okay it's not okay it was it was like riddled throughout the entire episode yeah everywhere they did it in the hotel they did it in the prison in the opera house. Uh-huh. I was so angry the entire time. <laughs> I was interested to see, or I'm interested to see if they do that for the rest of the series. I don't know. I mean, it's not going to be until next season of this yeah. podcast that we actually see another episode of this. But I'm um, also, I want to take note that uh, that pizza guy is like for the first side character that has nothing to do with the story. We never see him again. We never talk about him again. He's just like, hey, what's up, you guys? <laughs> and we're like, I'll take some pizza with a whole bunch of garlic on it. Like, it literally had nothing to do with anything. The you whole, could have cut that entire scene out. The whole point of them eating the pizza was that they were going to be vampire-proof. And then they, garlic breath. they immediately run into the vampire, and it does nothing. Yep. <laughs> well, you know, we notice this after they go out and eat, you know, eat the pizza, that, you know, they're all, Shaggy, Scooby, and Scrappy are all super fucking suspicious of Daphne. They're all suspicious. So I wrote down, okay, sorry, because I'm just going to keep referencing uh, the 2002 live action movie. Why is it that this is happening? I don't know. <laughs> because it popped in my head when he, when Scrappy was, like, dissing Daphne. Yeah. Oh, because... After they were done eating the pizza and they were walking and they were like, oh, Daphne's there. We better go get her because she might she get might, caught by the vampire. She might get or caught by the vampire. And Scrappy literally goes, but would she do that for us? <laughs> and I wrote down that Scrappy never liked Daphne. That's why he peed on her shoe. Yeah. That's why he got kicked out of the car. He didn't pee on her shoe. He just peed, peed on, on her. her. <laughs> like, like, you just. First episode, I already know you don't like her. I already know what's going to happen. Like, you just don't like her. (laughs) In a way, I don't think Daphne likes him either. That's fair. I don't like him either. (laughs) Well, I just thought it was funny when he said that. When he was just like, would she do that for us? No one answered. No No one responded. It was just left alone. I'm just like, what is going on with this script? They're casting a lot of shade on Daphne right now. Because they were just like, she's an awful person. She definitely sucks blood so that she can stay alive forever. (laughs) I thought that pizza guy's accent, though, was obnoxious. That was everything. (laughs) Everything. That was everything for me. I laughed so hard when when I heard it the first time. I was dying in my chair that was hilarious hey! it was just so loud too it's like hey! it didn't fit in at all like they were like i don't even remember what they were talking about just yeah. oh yeah da, da, da. how was your day hey hey, <laughs> hey what's it gonna be I've funny at- guy i actually want to step back for one moment when they were in the hotel and they got attacked by the vampire there. Yeah. It was right before Daphne came back downstairs and mm-hmm. you were questioning. It's like, why the fuck are you out of bed? Well, you know, the vampire appears out of nowhere and then the lights go off and then Daphne a- appears. And Shaggy and Scrappy and Scooby, they all point out that Daphne doesn't have a reflection in the mirror. Mm-hmm. You know, and I instantly like wrote down and just like, I suspect that the mirror rotates in the dark. I said it was a double-sided mirror or it rotates in the dark. Yeah. I just thought that was something that is relevant to the end. But Neither you or I ever suspected Daphne, so that makes us truer friends well, yeah. than her own gang. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Daphne's going to be arrested and we will never see her again. <laughs> <laughs> in Alcatraz. In Alcatraz. Oh. <laughs> Poor Daphne, man. Shit. <laughs> I didn't even do nothing. And then after Scrappy questions, you know, whether or not Daphne would do this for us, you know, they go down this alley and they try and talk to the vampire who they think is Daphne. And then the vampire (laughs) turns around and Shaggy's like, Daphne? And the vampire's like, you fool, I am the vampire. (laughs) So the accents in this episode were just the greatest things ever. Yes, love them all. <laughs> I also made a note that the vampire puts Scrappy in a box. Like three boxes. And then Scooby and Shaggy, they contemplate leaving him in there. Same. 
<laughs> Shaggy was just like, uh, what'd he say? Maybe we should leave him in there, eh? <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> I'm just like, are you Canadian now? <laughs> but also, probably leave him in there. Same. It's going to save you a lot of trouble. <laughs> you know, you'll just be saving the world 20 years ahead of time. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> We're gonna keep referencing this movie. I swear. I'm sorry. Everything that's happening because right it's now. Because it, it is like, endgame. This is like this is foreshadowing. Yeah, because like aside from the little cameo that they made of Scrappy in the Scooby Doo Mystery Incorporated series, like yeah. that's the last time you really see Scrappy in any like TV or movie. Well, and even in Mystery Incorporated, it's a statue. It's of a them. statue. It's not him. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? That's a lie. I think they had a scene oh. in um. Oh, what was it? Scooby-Doo and the Goblin King, at the very end, they were like, you know how in the very end of like these movies, there's like this super dynamic chase yeah. scene. Well, they were doing a chase scene in a like circus carnival, and they had a uh, a prize tent, and all their prizes were stuffed animals that looked like Scrappy. Oh. <laughs> but um, like aside from like those random cameos that are just kind of thrown in there for people who know who Scrappy is, yeah, like. The 2002 movie is basically the last time you really see Scrappy yeah. in a movie or a TV show. You know, Scooby Apocalypse bring him, brings him back, but he's still salty in that, too. <laughs> so, like, all of this leads to that darkness that he yeah. has Yeah, so, like, him. this is us being like, what happened? What led to that? He met his hero. Yeah. I kind of wanted to say that's the definitive answer. Yeah. He met his hero. <laughs> like, he was this sweet, innocent little dog hey uncle scooby to like i'm gonna take your soul now basically it's like i'm gonna devour your soul and become immortal and big okay and i also big. i also <laughs> wrote down that scrappy is really little like not just puppy little he is the size of scooby's foot sometimes it, again, it goes back to that uh, note that I made about the proportions. Yeah. Proportions are always wrong. Like in they this made right him now. really little. Sometimes though, because Sometimes. there's other times where he's bigger, and it's just like, what's going on? You know, they say they explained in the 2002 movie <laughs> that he's not actually a puppy; that he has a glandular problem. Yes. <laughs> so maybe the glandular problem is why his sizes are all wrong in this series. <laughs> His body was just trying to decide. Okay, I promise this is the last time I'm bringing up that movie. Like, I don't want to bring it up again for the rest of this episode. I'm going to try really hard, but I'm not going to make any promises. <laughs> so, moving on from that, I do want to make a note that we saw another breaking and entering. Oh, with the opera house? They said, okay, we're going to go inside the opera house. And then they were just inside of it. So this time we don't know how they broke and enter, but we do know that it's closed down. Yeah, they stated that. They, they explicitly said it's not it's, open till tomorrow. Yes. And the whole fact is when everybody else came in, they were like, oh, I was drawn in because I saw the light was on. So everybody was like, it's really weird that the light's on. I'm going to go check this out. And it's because the gang broke it. Yeah, broke in. Yeah. And they are being the suspicious ones. Yeah. <laughs> I also noticed, like, right... Oh, when, when was it? At one point, Scrappy, I think, accidentally turns out the lights. And then the I lights so, come yeah. back on. And when they came back on, Fred's eyebrows were missing. <laughs> I did not see that. They were missing. And they were like... His forehead was huge. <laughs> I don't know how you missed that. Because it went on for, like, at least ten seconds on screen. Oh, no. His eyebrows were just gone. It wasn't, like, just a frame that an animator just you know missed because that happens a lot but no it was just an entire sequence i'm just like oh my god did they not see this <laughs> ultimately they catch the villain and before we like delve into you know who the villain was and why they did everything that they did do you like have any other notes you want to say i don't think so my last one is just talking about how they pulled the mask off okay well they discover that the vampire is the old lady that we don't know the name of. I don't care what her name is. <laughs> but she walked up. Sorry. Velma walked up and just very confidently grabbed her face and ripped it off. Basically. Implying that, like, she was wearing a costume wearing a costume. 
Because she was, though. Because I mean, she had the vampire mask on underneath the old lady mask. Exactly. And so that was my biggest <laughs> thing was I was like, how do we know she's not... Maybe like a wig. Like I could see maybe grabbing her by her hair expecting it to come off. because No, the she grabbed her by the face. She grabbed her like, by the face and just... Hand over and nose just and just ripped. <laughs> well, we discovered that it turns out the vampire is actually Lefty Callahan. And... Lefty Callahan's plan was basically to retrieve all of these jewels that they had stolen before they got arrested. The reason why I'm saying they is because it actually turned out that Lefty Callahan was a woman. And I think it was Shaggy that made a comment. It's just like, Lefty Callahan's a woman? I'm just like, yeah, women can commit crimes too. <laughs> you we sexist. We can? Whoa. <laughs> Shannon's just going to start going out and murdering people now. Thank you, Lefty Callahan. He gave me permission. Yep. Inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about that plan real quick, though. So Lefty Callahan stole a ruby, a diamond, and an emerald. Before being arrested, she evidently hid the ruby in a light in a boat, the emerald in an eye on this, like, lion statue thing in, I guess, San Francisco's China District, and the diamond was hidden in a chandelier in the opera house. So my thought was, because they all are in, like, the general few miles of each other, it's not like they had to go to, like, way different sections. Mm -hmm. But did she know she was going to get arrested? I don't know. Like, was your plan to hide them and be arrested and then, like, do this whole plan? I mean, well, like, my thing is, if you know you're going to get arrested... If you know there's, like, not another option out, then sure, go ahead and hide your jewels. And that way, when you do get out of jail, your jewels are still waiting for you. Yeah. But they kind of made it seem like she got, like, surprise arrested. Kind of. And my thing is, too, why the vampire costume at all? Yeah. I mean, you could have just been a lot more slicker to just go on the tour, snatch it up. Did she break out of jail? I assume so, because, well, that's the thing, is they wanted to see Lefty Callahan's cell, yeah, so but that, that could just that, be because they were an iconic criminal that was held in Alcatraz. Well, yeah, but so, yeah, so that implies, though, that they were held in, or that they escaped Alcatraz. Or, no, because they closed down Alcatraz. Okay. Alcatraz is not an operating prison. I know. Well, I'm, I'm just saying they don't have this time period. I guess they didn't even have it okay. operating. So, at this point, Alcatraz is a tourist spot. It's not a prison, and that's why Lefty Callahan isn't there. But, like, what I'm wondering is, is it because Lefty Callahan was broken out of jail at some point and is on the run, and that's why she was using the vampire costume? That's the only reason I can think. But my like, thing is, you point? already have the old lady costume. That's true. So And it's a pretty convincing one. Exactly. So, if she, honestly, minus the vampire, if she would have just dressed up as the old lady and actually done a little bit of research... Like, if she would have put the effort that she did into being a vampire that she did as being an old lady, she would have gotten away with it. Yeah. Be an old lady. She got away with the ruby. Mm -hmm. No one thought about except for Velma. Because for fucking why? And then the Chinese uh, dragon, right? That the a, emerald a was lion, in? A Chinese statue. That one could have been easily taken. Yeah. And then if she literally would have waited one more day... She could have gotten the chandel the chandelier. Well, no, because it would have been open and there would have been a ton of people there. I feel like she could have creatively gotten it or something. I don't know. I don't know. I personally think the plan was a little convoluted, again, because yeah. they always are. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, like, minus the, the vampire, I have confidence that she would have somehow figured it out. Well, my thing is... I personally understand the Chinese statue and the chandelier hiding places but the boat yeah is no the boat so got me random like how do you know you're gonna have access to that specific boat again like i'm glad that boat didn't sink or you know get decommissioned or something because yeah. you know if it is a boat that's like traveling between like no here's another thing though if callahan was held in the prison on alcatraz that means that she would have had to hide it in a boat that would one day be used as a tourist transportation boat to the island after it closes. Yeah. That's some foresight that I don't personally believe in. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had that type of foresight. Yeah, I don't know. I just didn't really get it. 
No. That was that was the episode, I guess. I mean, I don't really have any other no, comments to say. Except for, like, other animation errors that I noticed, you know. Scrappy's eyes turned brown at one point. And then there was that horrific scene that I kept rewinding of Velma walking through Fred oh, in the great. prison. <laughs> I rewound that like four times because I loved it watching how so horrible baffling. it was. <laughs> My favorite was when they all like jumped out the window, but they just kind of quickly oh, stepped hotel? over it. <laughs> they like just ran out the window. They didn't jump. They ran out and the they, window. Yeah, and they like, because they just stepped right over it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Well, that was I Left My Neck in San Francisco. Shannon, how would you rate this episode on the Scooby Snackometer? I gave it a five. A five. Explain. Um, it wasn't great. It didn't make me horribly upset. Mm-hmm. But, like, it had some valid points. And then also Daphne didn't look anything like the vampire. <laughs> so... You get a five. You tried, but not too hard. Well, it's funny because I actually gave it a five too, but after talking this out, like this entire episode, I'm actually dropping it down to a four. No. (laughs) I'm giving it a four. There were so many inconsistencies that I was, there were so many issues I was having with the plot, Mm -hmm. as well as the fact that the vampire doesn't look anything like Daphne. The fact that Daphne was basically made a plot point in the episode in a way to where she was useless. Yeah. I didn't like that because the gang still operated just fine without her. And I do find Daphne to be a valuable member of the gang. Maybe not in, like, the first series or two, but I think that this kind of episode kind of emphasizes the fact that she's not important. Yeah. In a way. And then also, you know, Scrappy being introduced into this episode was kind of annoying. There were a lot of points where I was annoyed with him. And... Then the animation and the proportions are just really throwing me off. Yeah, I'm dropping it down to a four. All right. Well, then that means that this episode averages out at about a 4.5 on the Scooby Snackometer. Woohoo. You know what I could really use after that? What? A Scooby Doo fun fact. <laughs> well, I always have one every week. This one's going to be interesting for you. I don't know if you knew this. Okay. Out of all five of the main members of the gang, Fred is the only one so far over the course of almost 50 years that has been shown not to have any siblings. Every other member of the gang has at least one sibling. Who is Shaggy's sibling? Shaggy has been shown to have two sisters. Okay, that's it's what been, I thought. I it's been debated that they're actually the same sister, okay. but others think that they're different just because they're different canons. But I'll start from the beginning. So Scooby has um, his brother Yabadoo, his brother Skippy Doo. And Howdy Do. And then there's Ruby Do, who's his sister, who is Scrappy's mother. Yeah. And it's interesting because with Ruby Do, she actually appears in more than one series. She appeared in both um, a pup named Scooby Do and then whatever Scooby Do, Scrappy Do series it was that she was shown to give birth to Scrappy. Yeah. Then there's Shaggy, who has Shuggy in a pup named Scooby Do, and Maggie in the new, oh, what was it? The new Scooby-Doo Mysteries, I believe it was. Okay. Maggie only appeared once. She was shown... In her episode, it was called uh, Wedding Bell Booze. And that was when Maggie was getting married, actually. Okay. But you never see her again otherwise. Shuggy, on the other hand, is a baby in a pup named Scooby-Doo. Shaggy's always having to, like, watch her or something like that. Like, he's kind of her babysitter. But the reason why I'm kind of... I kind of lean more to the fact that they're two different people... Because I feel like Maggie is older than Shaggy. And, yeah. But then I, but then Shuggy is clearly younger than Shaggy. Velma has one sister that has been identified, but there's actually two that I sus- that There's a second one that I suspect exists. So the one that we know is Madeline Dinkley. She is a student at a magician's school. Mm-hmm. Um, she was first and only introduced in Scooby-Doo, Abracadabra Doo. She has a big crush on Shaggy. <laughs> It runs in the family. Yeah. Well, then, I found this in a VHS tape. It was called Scooby-Doo's Greatest Mysteries. Between each... It was basically a a compilation of Scooby-Doo or Are You episodes. And between each episode, there was a behind-the-scenes look at Scooby-Doo. It was like like, like a TV special, I think. Yeah. And you would hear a bunch of fun facts about each of the characters and stuff like that. 
well, they would show, they talked about Velma at one point, and it shows, like, a family picture of her when she was a little girl, and she had, like, little, um... Pigtails? Pigtails. And I was, like, doing this, like, hand motion. <laughs> so I'm glad you got that. Um, but yeah, she had, like, little pigtails, and then there's her mom and her dad, and then there's this, like, older-looking girl. Like, she looks like maybe she's 13, 14 years old. She's kind of pretty. She doesn't have glasses like the rest of the family, but I think that that was supposed to be a sister. And then just wasn't? Wasn't named. Never seen again, ever. But that's a small little thing. Thought it was interesting. So maybe, like, her sister wanted to be a lawyer, and because their whole family is, like, wacky, they disowned her. It's possible. Or maybe it's just because she doesn't wear glasses. So they disowned her. <laughs> they disowned her. <laughs> you have twenty twenty vision. You can't be part of this family. Basically. And then uh, Daphne, we never saw any siblings of hers until Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated, actually, yes. when she's shown to have a bunch of sisters. Like five. She has, I believe, five sisters. Oh, four. But she's the fifth one. Well, here's the thing. So Daphne has her four sisters who are Dorothy, Daisy, Delilah, and Dawn. But then the weird thing is, you know, they're all, like, really successful. Like, one is in the army, one is a scientist or some kind of a doctor or something. Like, they all have really successful lives. Well, in the fourth episode of the series, Daphne attended one of her sister's weddings. And that sister was an astronaut. But it's weird because none of the other four sisters that we saw in the first episode were astronauts. So I suspect that that's a fifth sister that was unnamed. Well, okay, and that's fine, because if she's an astronaut, then, like, when we saw him in the first episode, she was in outer space. Yeah, yeah. And the sisters didn't really play a big role in the series anyway. No. You only actually get any dialogue out of two of them. There was the general. I think that was Dawn. Yeah. She was the nice one. I actually liked her, because she was, um, was comforting Daphne when she was having issues with Fred going to prom. Mm-hmm. But then the other sister, I don't remember her name, but she was a, I really think she was like a scientist or a doctor or something. She was a bitch. I hated her. But then you never see the other two, and you never see this astronaut sister again. So I'm just going to say that she went to Mars. Yeah. She's on her way to Mars right now. Well, and, no, and I mean, that's kind of reasonable, because I could see, you know, you come home from, like, the moon, and then... You get married, <laughs> you naturally. Probably get, yeah, maybe to, like, another astronaut, and you both go off to Mars together. She like, did marry an astronaut, actually. There you go. See, and that is one hell of a honeymoon. Yeah. Honey, I'm taking you to Mars. Fuck yeah, let's go. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and then there's Fred, who doesn't have any siblings, actually. Poor Fred. Maybe that'll change. Um, in recent news in the Scooby-Doo franchise, Scooby-Doo and Guess Who was announced. Yay. Yay. I know you're excited about this. Oh. <laughs> you know how much we love guest stars here on that Groovy Scoobcast. Oh, yeah. With the Batman and Robin episode. It was a blast. <laughs> um, Scooby-Doo and Guess Who is a new series that was announced. Um, it's slated to come out in 2019. And it's basically going to take on the same formula, from what we can tell, as the new Scooby-Doo movie. So every week is going to be a new guest star. They'll be either contemporary celebrities or they'll be fictional characters like before. So, you know, they'll have Batman and Robin again, I imagine. They're going to have The Flash, um, Wonder Woman. When it comes to celebrities, I've seen names such as Mark Hamill, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I really am excited for Bill Nye the Science Guy. That's the only (laughs) one I'm excited for. They're going to have Steve Urkel. All right. Um, They're going to have those singers, uh, Sia and Halsey. And they're also having a basketball player. I think his name's Chris Paul. I don't know his name. So, like I said, each week is going to be a new celebrity. Yay. What are your thoughts? Uh, Nope. No? (laughs) (laughs) I've never really been a big fan of, like, when Scooby-Doo crosses over with some things. Because they're not always great. No. Well, and... They're really hit or miss. And honestly, if they take on the same form that they have for the new Scooby-Doo movies... They jam, like, they just put so much in it because they were trying to fill an hour, and mm-hmm. you could tell. Yeah. So, like, if they do this where, like, if they maybe just make it, keep it a half hour, and that way you don't have to fill it with a whole bunch of random stuff that does not matter at all. Well, actually, you know, I kind of disagree. Because the Scooby-Doo Supernatural crossover was an hour long. 
I still haven't seen that. You haven't seen that yet? <gasps> I'm a huge oh, Supernatural great. fan. I'm so nervous. That is great. Shannon, you're a few months behind. I am. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but the thing is, I won't, like, spoil anything for you, but they filled an hour really well with that. And so I know, maybe they have the right writers for it. Well, that was actually a Supernatural episode, not really a Scooby-Doo yeah. episode. And they have decent writers. I guess. <laughs> I don't really know Supernatural that well myself. But that was actually a really healthy crossover from what I could tell. So, I mean, if the Scooby-Doo and Guess Who episodes can be up to par with what Scooby Natural brought us, it might be good. Yeah. Who knows? Okay. But in other news as well, they announced uh, for the end of this summer, I believe, they are coming out with the next direct-to-video Scooby-Doo movie, Scooby-Doo and the Gourmet Ghost. Mm. Have I talked to you about this before? No. No? They're basically going to be bringing in guest celebrity chefs. I <laughs> cannot wait. Gordon Ramsay? It's not Gordon Ramsay. I want Gordon Ramsay. If it's not Gordon Ramsay, I don't want it. I don't want it unless it's Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> I don't follow, like, chef or cooking shows, so I don't know any of the people. I don't know their names. I only know Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> and I just want him to show up and be like, this is horrible. <laughs> What the fuck is this, Scooby? <laughs> How dare you serve me this? <laughs> and then he'll be like, why don't you... Because that's his his big thing is when he thinks something's like raw or whatever. He'll be like, why don't you take a bite? And Shaggy and Scooby's going to take a bite and be like, this is fucking great. And he's going to be like, it's trash. <laughs> They'll be like, but it's good, You trash. just ate garbage. <laughs> you are garbage. You are garbage, Scooby and Shaggy. Gordon Ramsay, <laughs> get my life. He would say He would. <laughs> But yeah, it, it's not cry. Gordon Ramsay, unfortunately. Um, I don't remember, like I said, I don't remember any of the names of these chefs off the top of my head. I do know that they're all real people, and they're actually making one of them Fred's uncle. Because Fred has a shortage of uncles, apparently. Right. That's not right. He has so many. Like, every uncles. time something has to be filled, they're like, it's his It's, it's his, his uncle. uncle. It's just another one of his uncles. He has, like, 20 uncles. It's okay. It's okay. He can have another one. <laughs> Um, and then you can just only imagine how Scooby-Doo Mr. Incorporated fucked up that whole family tree. <laughs> Sorry to sidetrack. Oh, this so episode excited. really, like, sidetracked into a lot of different Scooby-Doo media everywhere. aside from the one we're actually discussing this just, week. I'm so excited. <laughs> excited for better things? Better things. <laughs> but that's basically all we have in the Scooby-Doo news right now. Shannon, are you ready to pull out the randomizer to pick our next episode? Oh, yeah. All right. Well, the next series that we're actually going to be pulling this from is from the second Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo. So we'll see what this pulls out. And it's... Oh, I forgot. (laughs) <laughs> so we marked them because there's so many we're doing they're like shorts kind of yeah and so we're like, doing three episodes like they're all seven minute segments yeah so we actually like numbered all of them in a weird way so but we'll just read you the titles okay let me look that up for a second all right the episodes are scooby's fun zone swamp witch and sir scooby and the black knight we get another Black Knight. <gasps> the Black, Black Knight. Knight's coming back. Guys, if it takes place in London, I'm calling headcanon on it. It's a thing. I can't wait. It's going to take place in England or something. <laughs> it's going to be great. Um, I'll provide the premises real quick for these episodes. So for the first one, Shaggy and the gang head to an amusement pier for games and food. But Scooby up its the strongman Killer Crunch when he hits him with, his ba- with a baseball. And they are soon on the run. I'd be pissed, too. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Next up is Swamp Witch. The guys are out boating in a swamp when they encounter a gruesome twosome, a hungry swamp witch and her ghostly goblin, who are looking for people they can turn into frogs to cook in frog leg stew. Me as a witch. (laughs) And the last one is Sir Scooby and the Black Knight. While bicycling through the Scottish countryside, the guys end up at a castle that they mistake for their hotel and encounter a very angry black knight who they believe is the hotel's manager. So it's not in England, it's in Scotland. 
Close enough. Close enough. Yeah. So it's 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 the same guy. It's canon. <laughs> we're gonna call canon on that. Um, <laughs> but like, how drunk are you to completely be like, yeah, that castle is my hotel? I don't know. I mean, they must be paying a lot of money for this hotel in Scotland to think. That, I don't know. How are they making money again? We're not talking about this this week. <laughs> So we're going to be reviewing these three episodes next week. If you guys want to watch the episodes between now and then, you can actually find all three together on the Richie Rich Scooby-Doo Show Volume 1 DVD set. It was released in uh, 2008. I know that I think two of the three episodes can be found elsewhere, but I'm just going to recommend doing that if you want all of them together. Otherwise, you can probably find the episodes on iTunes. Um, I know they're for sure available on the free Scooby-Doo Microsoft Store app. I always throw out the disclaimer that the quality of the audio and the visuals of those episodes in that app are not always the best. So, discretion be advised. (laughs) And don't forget that you can always follow us on Twitter. We are pretty active on there, so you can always talk to us and have some fun. Have some fun. I don't know. (laughs) What kind of fun, Shannon? I don't know. I'm lonely. Just come message us. (laughs) Go follow us at Groovy Scoopcast. We share any Scooby-Doo news or art or other cool things on there. If you want to see other cool Scooby-Doo things on the internet that we're a part of, you can always go on Tumblr or Instagram at Do Central. And now you can contact us at our new email, thatgroovyscoopcast at gmail.com. If you've been following us on Twitter or if you've been on the Do Central Tumblr, you'll see that we've been giving away planospheric disc stickers to those who go on iTunes and review us. Thank you to everyone who's done that. And for future giveaways that we plan to be doing throughout this podcast season, that will be the email that we'll have you contact us through in order to receive those awesome prizes. Well, I do hope that you enjoyed this episode of that Groovy Scoop cast. Come back next week for a, another Scooby snack-filled time. Bye, guys. Bye.